even color. You don't see any, um, the yolk separated from the white and all that. It's very even. It's a very nice soft scrambled egg. Remember in your temperatures, and I saw this happen today, if you go over that temperature danger zone for the egg as far as um, when it starts to discolor and separate, these eggs are going to turn um, um, metallic color. It'll get that metallic color to it so you know you're cooking out, cooking the iron and everything out of the liquid part of the egg. So it'll get that rust color to it. And a lot of times you think it's your pan being dirty. Okay, sometimes it is. When you cook with butter it is. But most of the time it's just you overcooking your eggs too much. You can cook a hard cooked egg without overcooking the egg. You know, and it looks all dirty and rusty like. That's the metal in the egg, okay? Or the metal in the liquids that we use. Like I put that water in there. There's natural metals in that water. There's sulfur and things in going on in that egg. So you have chemical reaction. They also tell you when you mix eggs, use a stainless steel container and don't use galvanized or uncoated pans that will pick up that metal or metallic uh, color from the um, container because uh, anything you put in there, uh, I remember in classical, so many times we were cooking and I would see someone with one of those um, pots, uh, just a regular metal pot. Um, I, I even saw one person use a galvanized one time. They would put egg and milk in there trying to do um, a sauce, and what happens is that um, sauce, basically after you heat it up to a certain temperature, it's going to pick up all the metals and everything in there. And then after you got through, you had a, um, a pastry cream that tastes like metal because it picked up all that metal. So you got to be careful when you're using egg, eggs with metal, okay, because it picks it up very well. And you can taste it. I mean, and basically what you're doing is poisoning someone when they're eating, eating that. You're putting extra metal in their body. Your body naturally um, gets so much iron on a daily basis, but when you add that extra to it, you can really hurt someone. All right, so be aware of all that. All right, what's another egg? Have we gone over all the basic eggs that you need to do on your competency? Poached egg? Okay. Let's poach an egg. I wasn't going to poach an egg, but let's poach an egg. Poaching an egg. All right. Basically, what you do when you poach an egg is you want to create a liquid with some kind of acid in it. I don't have any acid in here, so you're not going to get the acid right now, but let's assume that the acid is in there. Okay? Um, the acid keeps the egg from going to the bottom of the pan and sticking. Okay? So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little salt in here to help me out with this because I do not have vinegar or lemon juice or something of that nature to put in there. Um, when poaching an egg, the same procedure that I told you before, you crack the egg on a flat surface, you put the egg in a different container. You bring your water to a simmer And the book gives you specific times and all that. You know, some people like it medium. Some people like it well done. You know, basically, if you're cooking for a lot of people, you always want to cook it about medium, a little under. And then as you heat it up again or let it sit, it will cook a little more. So it should be just right. Uh, poached egg mostly used for what? We're doing... Um, Eggs Benedict. We're doing 
different styles of egg. I mean, you can create your own style of egg, usually with an English muffin or on top of some kind of um, crouton or something of that nature. But I guess eggs Benedict would be the more popular one. Okay, my egg is starting to come to a simmer here. My water is. What containers do you use when you poach an egg? You can use a fry pan. You can use a pot like I'm using here. Uh, skillet. Actually, anything can be used to poach an egg on a stove top. When you use the combi, um, there are different rules. Okay, you can put the egg in a pan. Um, just cover it with some liquid, and you can put many eggs in that same pan. And then you steam it based on the steam that's in the cavity of that combi. Okay, you can steam it for one minute, two minutes. You'll have to do a trial and error to see what's be what the best time is on that. All right, I have a simmer here. I'm going to drop my egg in there. Hope that it doesn't stick to the bottom because I don't have an acid. Put too much salt in it. But basically what you're trying to do when you're poaching, you want the whites to coagulate around the yolk, come together. Um, if it starts to stick to the bottom, you just kind of jiggle it just a little bit to get it off of the bottom, but you try not to touch the yolk. And control your temperature. Don't let it come to a boil, otherwise you're going to ruin it. And I'm trying. My, my liquid is trying to boil them, and I'm trying to keep it from boiling. I'm trying to get my... Okay. All right, I'm going to cook my yolk just enough so that... Um, and this is breaking up just a little bit. Again, I'm telling you, it's trial and error. If, if you add an acid to it, you got to get that acid just right so that it doesn't break up your whites, but it just keeps it from sticking to the bottom. So you test your liquid. Test it by tasting. Okay? All right. Now, if I'm going to do a medium one, I want my whites set. I want my yolk starting to firm up a little bit, and then I take it out. Okay. I've got it separated from the bottom. My yolks, my whites are firm. Now I'm just trying to get my yolk to sit up. I don't want it to boil. It's trying to boil on me. And most of the time you can do it by sight. You'll, you'll know when that yolk is about ready. Turn it down some more, it's starting to boil a little bit. You use a perforated spoon to get it out with. Okay, let's see if I can pick this up. And again, it's, it's timing. That worked out for me. Where, where, where should I put this, right there? Okay, so I got a, about a medium last demo, it didn't record all the way, so what we're going to do is talk about what happened with um, your food preparation and what we saw, and try to figure out how we can correct some of the things that happened. One of the things I saw, uh, we talked about the waffle line. Let me go over the waffle line a little bit more for the benefit of some of the other people. Um, Bells and waffle line, it has a timer up here. Uh, it's set right now for 250. Can you see that? 250, one minute and 50 seconds. And we know it turns on on the side over here. Uh, we know that this timer works by flipping this over, and then the timer will start, or it should start. This one's not. Okay, so you put your battery in. You flip the waffle over and the timer will start counting down. 